So good morning, sir. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here at uh, Elan Water Factory at the foot of Mount Gilin in Sindri province, sir. Good morning. Pleasure to have you here. Yes, sir. Uh, Elan Water is famous for its alkaline content, yeah. uh, especially its uh, purest. I mean, the, the pureness that you know you extracted from underground, yeah. basically from the natural aquifer under the mountain, yeah. Gulen, yeah. one of you know the sacred mountain in Cambodia, to say absolutely, you know, to say the least. Uh -huh. um, First of all, you know, because I see on the logo, you said alkaline and also pH level 8.2. And alkaline for, you know, for normal people, it is a bit technical for them to understand. So basically, what is alkaline water, sir? And why should people drink alkaline water? Okay, so that's a good question. Yes, sir. So pH is the means to measure acidity in your body. As human beings, we all have the same natural pH, and that pH is about 7.3. In our blood. In, in, yeah, in, in, in our body, that's right. Yes. Actually, in, in, in our water, actually, in, in our body, in our water. Below a pH of 7.3, you can say that that person or anything with a, a pH of less than 7.3 is acidic. Mm -hmm. Anything above 7.3, as you rightly point out with Elan Natural Mineral Water, above 7.3 is alkaline. So what is the benefit of alkaline? Well, if I spin that round, what you don't want to be is acidic. Okay. Acidic reflux or you know, a, a, a byproduct of a poor diet or too much alcohol in your body makes your body acidic and that can be lead to uh, different causes of, of unhealthiness in your body. So you need to be at a minimum what your body is naturally at a, a pH of 7.3. So as part of a balanced diet, drinking Elan natural mineral water with a pH of 8.2 every day as part of your lifestyle will help increase your pH of your body above 7.3 and again, will prevent your body going into a state of acidity below 7.3. So you mean like alkaline, they normally neutralize the uh, acidic content? It can, yeah, absolutely, it can do. You know, ha having a single bottle won't do that, or having a single uh, bottle of anything of, of alkaline won't neutralize acidity. But yes. to have something like that as part of your daily lifestyle, be it in the morning or if you're going to the gym, and your, your, your lifestyle of having bottled water, rather than have anything that's below 7.3 or at neutral, yes. just standard purified water. If you have water that's alkaline above 7.3, absolutely, Elan Natural Mineral Water with a pH much higher at 8.2. Yes. That will help your body stay alkaline and, and, and away from a, a situation of, of being in acidity. Yes, sir. Yeah. So in the bottle of Elan water, yeah. you only take water that is pH 8.2 and above and nothing below that. Yeah, we, ha we, yes. we have, abs yeah, yes, yes, is sir. the answer to that. We have a standard that our water must be a minimum, minimum. of 8.2. In fact, the actual water pH content in our bottle can be anywhere between 8.2 and about 8.8. .8. A part of our process in the factory when we actually extract the water from the ground and before it goes into any kind of production at all, we actually measure through our labs the content of, or the, the, the level of that pH. And if that pH is below the 8.2, again, that our absolute minimum standard, that water is returned into the, into the ground. So 8.2 is like the magic number, you know, for, for, for the bottle. For the bottle, 100%, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the other hand, sir, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I've heard, you know, other stories and other, you know, information. You know, basically, there are two types of, you know, alkaline and, you know, mineral-induced water. So for Elan, it is natural. Yeah. And for other water, they are, you know, forcefully induced yeah. inside the water. And, you know, the pH level is also artificial. Sure, yeah. So, what is the difference between your natural one and the non-natural one? Well, you've answered your own question, to be honest with you. Yes. Now, um, one is induced in a lab, yes, sir. and one comes from Mother Nature. Yes, so, there are a number of waters available that 
a mineralized water, not natural mineral water. And as you point out, that's having a standard purified water and then putting in something to create the mineralization of water, mineralized water. And it's exactly the same thing for uh, uh, a pH. So if somebody or a, a, a company has a water with a pH of 7.3 or, or at 7, and to want to have that as a higher alkaline, a higher pH, then they, they increase that in a laboratory situation. So what's the difference? One is created by science in a laboratory, and the other, by which by, yeah, by, by Mother Nature. And let's be honest, I think most people these days look for something that's created by nature, something natural, as opposed to something that's created uh, in a lab or in a factory. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so the water comes from the sky and it, you know, it flows into the soil for you know, hundreds of meters. Yeah. And you know, at the same time, even though it is filtered naturally like that, yeah. until it goes into the aquifer, your system also try to eliminate any unwanted contamination, sir, away from the water in order to make it as pure, as clean as possible. Yep. So by looking at this di diagram over here, sir, I, uh, I, I feel a bit, you know, wonder like, sure. why do you really need the five, you know, micron cartridge and you know up to one micron yep. cartridge and yeah. Finally, sir, the ultra filtration that you know maybe or not maybe, but. The only one in Cambodia, uh, you know, here in yep. Thailand. Yep. So why do you need this much filtration? So like, what do you try to? Sure. Okay. So look, let me take a step back because the beginning of your question, you pointed out something very interesting. Yes, sir. When the water, as, as you rightly could say, comes from the clouds, come down to Kula Mountain, and then starts its journey. Actually, if we look here, it starts its journey below the ground, yes, sir. 150 to 250 meters. There are different levels or different layers here. So we have rock, big stones, yes. medium stones, clay, sand. The higher here, then the larger that sediment is going to be, the larger the stones are going to be. Yes, sir. The further down you get, obviously through gravity and pressure, the smaller those rocks and the smaller those grains of sand are going to be. So that water is going to be naturally filtered as a byproduct of that process anyway by the time it reaches these aquifers. So if you look at that water, although it's not safe to drink at that point, it's pretty much naturally filtered, but there is still a lot in there, okay? Not that you and I might be able to see. So in answer to your question, why do we have these filters that are so incredibly small, yes, sir. arguably to the point that our eyesight could not see the actual the, the filter of the hole, is because the water may appear clear and free of any sediment or any sand at all, but, but it's not. not. Okay. okay, so that answers the question why these filters need to be incredibly small, yes, okay? This, as you say, is five micron. This is one micron. This piece of machinery, again, you point out, is arguably the only piece of machinery of a production facility in Cambodia. Yes. The highest international standards from Europe, as, as everything is, but this one in particular, is 0 0.2 micron. Oh, so, much, so much yeah, so um, all this side of things, adhere to an industry standard that you would expect and you must have ISO 22000 okay and also a certification of uh, a GMP a good manufacturing process which you know, the accreditation that we have here at Elam okay so this is what you would expect and this is something that you must have as part of your process this is something extra which is a differentiator between the um, process of filtration this ultrafiltration, a difference of what we have here at Elan against any other natural mineral water coming from the ground or the springs in Cambodia. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you know, just now you showed me the diagram here at yeah. Phnom Kulin, at, at Kulin Mountain, of course, sure. by Phnom Kulin. Yeah. So uh, it might be a question because you know Cambodian people they like Mount Kulin. You know, it's a very historical, it's very cultural. Yeah. So why do you choose Mount Kulin as a place for the spring water? So like. Is it you know, something special about its terrain or something like that? Sir? Well, 
there's a lot special about uh, the, the Kulam Mountains. It's the, uh, the creation of the Khmer Dynasty, of course. Yeah. You know, um, this is where the Khmer Dynasty uh, was, was founded. So um, for people of Cambodia, there is nothing more sacred, you know, culturally or historically, than Phnom Kulen. So to be able to have water that comes from such a sacred ground um, is very, very special you know, for the people of, of Cambodia. And we're very, very sympathetic and empathetic to how we extract that water from the ground. We're very, very careful. You know, we, we are aware if ever in our different wells that water may be low okay, through periods of, of dry weather, then we leave that water. Okay, we're not taking. We're very empathetic and understanding of the environmental practices that, not that we should, that we must have adhere to and play to the importance of of where this location is. So absolutely, it, no, it's the main reason is it's symbolic, and we are fortuitous and we are lucky that in our exploration before this factory was built, we needed to find was there water here that we would be able to use you know in in great quantities so we're not using all the water again our responsibility to the environment and the people of cambodia we can't take all the water yeah. okay so we were very lucky and we did find a number a number of different aquifers, aquifers and flowing water under the ground yeah yes sir and uh, related to you know your your ambition and you know the institution ambition to protect the environment yeah. at the very back over there yesterday i saw a very like quite a big solar farm yeah so you know by creating the solar farm i mean is it your intention to go green and how much you know power do you expect yeah. from the sun? So in, in well, the, the factory has now been uh, here for a good six years and yes. When you're planning a factory in 2023 or you know, 2015 around then, it would be criminal to not, not literally, but it would be morally and environmentally criminal not to look at green practices. And the first one on that is, is energy. Um, so to build as you say a, a solar farm the one great thing that we have here in cambodia <laughs> nearly every single day of the year is sun, sun. <laughs> okay so let us use that let us use that free yeah. raw raw free rawness of that sun and, yeah. and power this factory the factory here the elan factory was the first factory uh, in business in cambodia to fully be fully operational purely by solar power. So yeah, we have a very, very large solar field here. We're very proud of that fact, but at the same time, it absolutely is our responsibility to uh, be, be, be kind to the environment and, and drive green practices through, yeah. And just uh, for the last question to you, sir. Uh, even though we are standing here inside the showroom, yeah. I can still you know, hear the rumbling sound of the machinery. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a very big production, sir. I yeah. mean, you know, bottles flow. You know, after second. Constantly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How how much you know bottle do you make? I mean, per, per unit of time, sir, here daily. Okay, so per hour, yes, the production line has a capacity or capability of uh, just under thirty-two thousand bottles an hour. Mm -hmm. Actually, thirty-one thousand eight hundred and twenty to be exact. No, so that's a lot. Half a liter water bottle. Yeah, the yes. different the different sizes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. yeah. Wow, so that's a big production. So, and yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it, that's the capability of the production line. Yes. As, as everything in, 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 in retail, you have busy periods of year at festivals where it's, it's supply and demand where we need to increase production. Yes. And there are going to be times of the year in, in anything in retail where it's a little bit slower. Okay, so we have a capability of running at nearly 32,000 uh, bot bottles per hour, but that's not necessarily what we are running all the time. Yes, yeah, so, so okay. it fluctuates. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Again, I come back to, you know, in terms of our environmental awareness, okay, and responsibilities, the water generally is a constant, but if, if we find that it's, it's a little bit low, mm -hmm. yes, okay, and, and, you know, and we have stock, 
then we will drastically reduce that production and be aware that, you know, allow that water to come back into the aquifers to breathe. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sir, and uh, wow, that's a very great presentation of yours, sir. And uh, thank you for, uh, for your informative, uh, you know, explanation My on, on yeah. your production line and, of okay. course, on the Gulen Mountain.